Nobody's gonna argue with me that it's not cheap, right? This is like, this is, this is a niche, niche price is quite, quite up there. I was like, <gasps> and I got all of them. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Marie Emiliore. Welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about the collection that I have from a brand called Atelier Bloem. This is one of the brands that I consider to be like a sort of like my little secret favorite. Um, they are not cheap as many of niche brands are, but again, comparatively to some of the designer prices, they're they're fine. <laughs> they are cheaper than Tom Ford, let's say, and I would say that they have somewhat more sophisticated and nuanced uh, olfactory creations, the kind of like the formulations that they can offer. They are based, as far as I know, it's an American brand with Holland roots, and most of their perfumes that are created to date are inspired by very delicate, sophisticated floral form formulations. So it's all inspired by the floral markets at, at Amsterdam. In terms of the marketing story, the fairy tale of how the brand was created, what it stands for, I think it's perfect. It's really a neat, very cleanly defined story. It is inspiring to me. And I think it's about a perfect fit into the world of perfume products. In some ways, we can think of the um, Atelier Bloem as a, a boutique, kind of like a higher-end niche custom line or like a branch of the Matthew Mallon and Andrew Goyet's main line, main line that a lot of a lot of people have heard of. They have, as far as I know, seven fragrances. I think the tulip one, the the one that I actually have here and the one that I actually panned, finished, uh, that was a, that was gifted to me from Sandbird when they were kind of like really trying to get the word out about their service and they're sending a lot of the free decants to different bloggers. At the time I didn't have this channel, it was like for my different um, beauty channel and I was kind of skeptical about the Atelier Bloem, as generally we are, about the brands we've never heard of. But when I kind of learned about the pedigree, who made the brand, what's it based on, um, I, I softened up a bit. And when I actually got my decant of Extraordinary Tulip, which I think was renamed from Black Tulip to Extraordinary Tulip, I don't know what's the story there, but I think it's pretty much the same fragrance. Um, that kind of opened up a ocean of curiosity, like a, a whole door toward Atelier Bloem that I really like the craving that I had to, to sample all of their perfumes. What's so special about the Extraordinary Tulip compared to other spring florals that I have tried that is actually one of the most vibrant and punchy, I will use that word, even though rarely ever spring florals are punchy. The whole point of them is to be delicate, um, a little bit demure and flowy, right? They, 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 most of the time they're supposed to be flowier, but here I think this is the magic of combining wood notes with vetiver as a base. It has this very strong, kind of narrow, bright base. Most perfumes, especially florals, they kind of fall back into something undefined, musky, vanilla, sweet nothingness at the end, right? Most of the sweet florals, fruity florals, this is not it. The vetiver base here always keeps this perfume dense and kind of more narrow, a little bit more punchy, a little bit more, I don't want to say zesty, but kind of brassy in a way. And the fact that this is tulip, and I absolutely believe in the story that this is tulip. It's it's a perfume tulip, obviously. I don't think they really tried to. Maybe they did. I don't know. I don't. But I don't think this is the attempt to reproduce 100% correct headspace, right? Like the opening, as as your nose experiences it, the smell of tulips. But it comes darn close. Absolute number one. I finish the bottle. If I can't figure out how to put my hands on for you know for a reasonable price considering I'm gonna know by a year <sighs> that 
that's that's the story for another video if i can't figure out how to get a bottle of extraordinary tulip i'll probably get another decant because this is one of the one of the best spring florals that i have in my collection and again very believable tulip with uncharacteristically unisex kind of like potent vetiver presence through it absolutely love it the next one that I tried also through Sandbird, I don't have a decant with me, but it's pretty much the same story, was New Amsterdam. So New Amsterdam is a more, I would say, typical, powdery, a little bit dusty, floral, niche fragrance that you would expect from the, from, from the marketing story of floating Amsterdam market. It, it is demure, it is seductive, but in a very wallflower kind of way. So it's like a, it's a, you know, like wet dreams of a librarian, if you wish. The authors of The Sand actually worked hard on creating short but very telling descriptions of the perfume. So I would really love for you to, to hear what they, what they have to offer. So, inspired by tradition, fused with hyper-contemporary elegance, I think it really fits the brand. Hyper, I'm not say hyper, but contemporary elegance. It's a very kind of like contemporary art museum kind of scent, oddly enough. This regionally inspired blend mixes sweet, enlightening scent of geranium rose with the warm aromas of cedarwood, amber, and musk. By the way, a lot of people who are looking for kind of powdery, mm, non non sweet not like sticky sweet rose you know rose that is more powdery rose that a little bit more kind of like dressed up don't be afraid of geranium as a note because very frequently rose is recreated through the notes that are common for recreating geranium flower note uh, geranium flower smell as well new amsterdam makes me think of those old hobbies that used to be so popular in the old times in the 20th century. I don't think anybody does it anymore. If you do it though, let me know. It when people were, who were into gardening, into botany, into basically plants, ecology and all kinds of stuff, would uh, create albums and you would get exotic leaves, uh, flowers, you would, you would if, you, if it was possible to collect it, you would kind of put between the pages and you dry it up and, and maybe pin it or glue it or just save it between the pages and you would sketch it as well. So it, it, all of those kind of like craft books that are about rare scents and flowers. To me, that's how this smells. Story time. Just the other day, I visited Marshalls in Florida. Uh, in, at least in Florida, at the time of the filming, the stores are reopening, but they have to abide by specific, pretty strict social distance rule, distancing rules. Uh, it basically results in a lot of long lines outside of the store. They count people in, they give you like hand sanitizing wipes. So they try to kind of create a safe shopping experience. I was very happy. I mean, I understand that there's like pros and cons to opening the shops again, but personally, as an avid TG Maxx and Marshall shopper, I was so, so happy <laughs> to visit the stores again. So imagine my astonishment when I come to Marshall's and yes, and I see these perfumes on the shelves. So they're fair kind of like marketing price, I think is around $170. It's, it's somewhere in between 160 to 200 dollars per bottle. The bottles are fairly big; it's 100 ml. But I, I don't think we, we're gonna nobody nobody's gonna argue with me that it's not cheap, right? This is like this is this is a niche niche prices quite quite up there. Um, and when I saw them in Marshalls for 80 dollars, I was like. <gasps> How many can I can I buy at once? <laughs> and I got all of them. <laughs> and to be honest, after that, I actually raided. Well, raided. Um, I went around the area and I visit visited all Marshalls stores and TG Maxx stores that you know that I had time to visit in that given day. 
and I haven't found a single one where they had those fragrances. This is what like, <sighs> this is the thrill of the chase. This is what keeps me coming back to these stores that on a random day, in a random discount store like that, you can find niche fragrances more than half off, but that's it. They literally somehow got four bottles and that was it. There was no extra stock, nothing appeared a day or two later, none of the neighboring stores had them. So let's celebrate my luck together and talk about the fragrances that I got. This is what their bottles look like. They all look the same. Um, I like the quality of the make. I do find that the customized shape of the bottle um, adds to it, even though it's such a simple design, but at least it's not generic. The bottle is definitely recognizable, has a recognizable shape, matte paper with just the name of the brand and the fragrance on it. The packaging is good, it's pretty tight, it's very light cup, but I think it has either imitation of wood or maybe bamboo, like a, a thin layer of just black coated wood on it. So it's, it's really clean, it's well made, it doesn't look cheap. That's what I wanted to, to get across considering the price of them, right? That, that kind of becomes important when, when the brand is asking that much money. Okay, 1614. I think, uh, don't take my word for it, but I, I think it was the first one or one of the first ones. It is a basically soapy floral on, on kind of like the first whiff. Making me think of Lily of the Valley maybe a little bit. We'll get to the pyramid in a second, but like the first impressions, right? So it's something sweet, but with floral notes in it wrapped as well. So I wouldn't call it gourmand. I wouldn't call it mm, a sweet floral either because sweet florals are usually very flamboyant and rich. This is still has this kind of like light and flowy, very spring-like, at least to me. To be honest, I wouldn't really call it a sweet floral. You know, there's like a whole category when the fragrance is essentially quite, quite sweet. When in, in its nature, it has a lot of floral notes rather than fruity or gourmand. To me, this is still a floral scent, but there is an undeniable kind of clover sweetness to it and some, some kind of soapiness. Um, in, in, in the way that it kind of moves in space, all of these fragrances, I think with exception, with exception of New Amsterdam that is quieter and more powdery skin-like, all of the fragrances we're talking about here in, by Atelier Blue M are very volant. They kind of like fly away from you. But since they are not super pungent or um, they don't really hit your nose, when they arrive to your nose, they're still very souffle-like, very light, very spring-like. But yet they move a lot in space. They, they do seem very volant to me. All right, 16. 14. What do the makers tell us about it? A slightly floral fragrance blends the dewy freshness of sweet clover, I guess it right, and citrus with an understated woodsy musk giving the perfume a subtly sun-warmed scent. I mean, again, I think they did an exceptional job with such short, poetic, but to the point descriptions of fragrances. Very often you find fragrances described with like a laundry list of notes and like, I think Italy Bird Orange is kind of guilty of that and like a few others. When there's like so many notes and yet you can't why get a clear impression? What are you about to experience? These descriptions, I must say, are so to the point, yet poetic, and they're not, they're not banal. Not my type of scent though. I was kind of like postponing my own judgment because I'm really in love with the brand concept and the way that they approach making perfumes. It's very, very me. But this is just not my cup of tea. Uh, the clover sweetness, I think I prefer 
something more like a tonka bean sweetness maybe ambery vanilla or woodsy kind of dry cedar or kind of dry wood sweetness but the clover clover is a very spe specific type of sweetness you either love it or you don't very few people kind of are ambivalent toward clover so if you do love clover centric sweetness and you crave that kind of contrast of sweetness and soothiness of, of clover sweetness with freshness of citrus and kind of woodsy notes with florals 16 14 probably will blow your mind but it's not quite my story uh, half moon is another one that I managed to pick up in Marshalls. Oh, the moment I smelled it, it was like, oh my God, this is a Tarte Libre d'Orange, just, just jasmine and cigarettes, but more jasmine than cigarettes. They're so similar. I even got the decant of a Tarte Libre d'Orange here to compare, and I was comparing them last night, and it's so, they're like brother and sister. This is like a, a more tough, a little bit more austere, and I don't wanna say violent, but kind of punchy more cigarettes than jasmine. The half moon is more jasmine than cigarettes, but it still has that kind of narrow, refreshing, almost, almost offending freshness that makes me think of cigarette smoke. I know cigarette smoke is not exactly what we associate with freshness, but it definitely wakes you up, right? Like sometimes you just get this um, it, it's just very offensive to the nose. It's very bright and, and narrow. Obviously, we don't really think of <laughs> cigarette smoke <laughs> scent as refreshing, but what, I, what I'm trying to say that it's so piercing to, for the nose, the cigarette smoke, that it is, it does wake you up. You cannot not notice it unless you're like a a long-term smoker smoker so this is why the jasmine and half moon it's again a very I don't know why I'm using the description like narrow you know like some scents they seem very thick some are densely packed some are more kind of falling into pieces some are moving some are souffle like some are very dense so to me this is a very narrow piercing scent of jasmine um, let's see what the makers say about the half moon let's find it half moon 2010 okay so it's a it's an oldie uh this is a white floral obviously jasmine intoxicating well you see i don't find this intoxicating i find this urban and refreshing but they say this intoxicating mix of jasmine bergamot fresh greens and musk offers a lush, seductive scent that is perfect for the moody and ethereal ambience of a night half-lit by the moon. Um, <laughs> it, I mean, they are the makers of there, right? To, to claim what the story is, to me, this is a quite a different kind of story. To me, this is actually a morning in New York City, uh, right somewhere in the middle of Manhattan, when you're just emerging from the subway and you're hit and it's like so early it's not hot yet but you can tell it's gonna be a hot day and the mixing the, the sort of the the freshness of of early morning is mixing with the smells of your floral let's say jasmine perfume of somebody lighting a cigarette and it's to me it's very urban refreshing and morning kind of scent this is the scent that I would wear if I had a really stressful and busy day at work ahead of me rather than something seductive for, what is it? Half lit by the moon. Night half lit by the moon. Uh, I wore it a few times and I was hoping that maybe the mask will give it some 
dem demurring quality, something more sensual and relaxing. But to me, the scent forever stays very piercing and very forward going. So that's Half Moon for me. And I think it's, if you tried Jasmine and Cigars by Tadley Bourdorange, but all you can smell was wet cigarettes, you know, wet, wet cigarette buds, which is a common description of that perfume, believe it or not. Then try Half Moon by Atelier Bluyen because this is, I think, a more elegantly balanced version of that kind of that kind of jasmine. To me personally, I don't really have a need to have both, and I do prefer, oddly enough, Italy Bird Orange Jasmine and Cigarettes because it's a little bit more punchy. But this is a close favorite, and again, I think this is a little bit more wearable and a little bit more elegant. The next one is William. This is from like from the get-go a very new roly centric scent. And as soon as I sprayed it, let me actually refresh it. I'll torture myself for the sake of this review one more time. Immediately reminded me that I have a very complicated relationship with new roly note. I'm actually super curious to find somewhere, uh, some, to find an opportunity to smell new roly as it is, the flowers, because every single time I find new roly in perfumes, I don't like it. I'm on the hunt for a truly caressing new roly scent. I know that's not what new roly is known for. New roly is either kind of bitter and green, and often it complements to bureaus very well, especially the green and kind of like <laughs> animal, animalic kind of predatory aspects, uh, green aspects of tuberose. Or it can be powdery and very soapy. This to me is a case of a soapy Neroli. It's both green and soapy, and I don't think it's really working for me very well. Uh, when it comes to the description, official description of William, a complex and refreshing neroli scented perfume distilled from the blossom of the bitter orange tree as well as the wood and the leaves. So basically, this is the orange tree in, in its all facets. That's what they try to portray. The, the headspace of the neroli, of the like bitter orange blossoms, the woodiness, the thick green leaves, like everything about it they tried to combine in the scent that they called William. William was launched in 2010. Why did I think that they, some of them were launched in 2017? I don't know, we'll never know. Um, I would say that this new Roly, if I had to compare with something, is a better, more elegant, sophisticated version than uh, new Roly by uh, Patricia Nicolai. Yeah, because there, I mean, it kind of it's, it's it's a matter of subjective taste. If we are to kind of go across a whole field of new Roly centric scents, I don't have many. As I told you, I have a complicated relationship with the new Roly as a note. I think I will be more game to wear a Neroli if it's sweeter, more, more nude, more creamy. But, but when it comes to the kind of soapy and green Neroli, which I think is supported by the woody notes that are kind of like from the orange tree and kind of like zesty green notes that are here as well, the closest one that I found uh, would be by Nikolai Neroli Intense. So I do have 30 mil, which I can, I'm more than willing to, to sell if you're interested. So here I find that Neroli is even more punchy and even more kind of piercing. In William by Atelier Bloem, Neroli is a little bit softer and more again, for some reason, soapy. That's how I f feel it opens up on my skin. Again, I have it here. Yeah, it's, 
inoffensive enough that I could wear it, but I don't really see a strong reason to. So I don't think this will probably stay in my collection for much longer. Uh, if you really want a few other comparisons, I think, I think the only other very, very new Rolly centric scent that I know of is uh, Lilabo. I think they have a new Rolly. That one is a sweet, honey like, very dense, sweet, flamboyant middle of the summer new Rolly. So that one is has, I think, frangipani like a battery, a really sweet tropical mm, creamy flowers in it. And that is more my kind of story when it comes to Neroli, even though I'm not a big fan of super sweet perfumes, oddly enough, but the green and zesty bitter or, or soapy Neroli is not quite grabbing my attention. But if you hate super sweet white florals and you're looking for this kind of like zesty green woodsy neroli scent i think the william basically combines all the notes everything that you can possibly love about neroli and orange tree is in this bottle and the last perfume by atelier bluem that i got recently most of these i got blindly there was no way to sample them so this is my impressions from like taking a huge risk for you guys uh, this one is Iris and considering all of the splurge, so I got basically four perfumes for you today, right? Like Blindly and Marshalls, which is even, even with the discount is a very, what am I doing? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a very hefty purchase either way, but out of all of them, I hope I don't break anything, man. Okay, <laughs> out of all of them, Iris is the one that I think I love the most. Oddly enough, I'm not a big fan of Iris perfumes either. I kind of, it's, Iris Snow to me is almost too intellectual. It's something that I admire from a distance, but I really enjoy, truly enjoy being surrounded by the smell of Iris perfumes. There are a few exceptions to the rule. Um, so this Iris is undoubtedly one of my favorites. And I think it's partially because it's not so about Iris as it is about the idea of it, the sort of aesthetic of the flower. It's both, the Iris is bright, but very elegant, right? Like that's what we associate with it. It's, it's a very understated flower and it's not as magnificent and rich as roses and things like that, right? But there, there is a whole army of people who are avid supporters and lovers of irises as flowers and as a perfume scent. So what kind of iris do we get from Atelier Bloem? To me, this is more rounded, I don't want to say creamy, but kind of like sweeter florals with the heart of iris in it. Mm, for example, if we think about the classic iris cologne by prada um, that one is more dry more powdery more dusty and a little bit more serious this iris is very charming and quiet it's a very skin-like scent and this is probably this is the, probably the least potent scent out of the whole line I would say that to, in my mind, Extraordinary Tulip is still absolute number one by, by longevity, complexity of composition, how complementary it is to my skin, how interesting and unique it is in my uh, olfactory library. But Iris is, is the quiet charmer. I almost wanna say that it has something sweetly rosy about it. That's what gives us this kind of very heart-warmed roundness. Uh, when it comes to the description of it, with its vibrant colors, soft petals, and subtly unique shapes, the iris has often been a muse for painters throughout history. The, this interpretation of the flower scent is smooth and alluring, balancing a refined floral fragrance with a soft, woodsy aroma. Did 
you notice they really like woodsy bases which I think you can't really go wrong with that it's first of all it's doesn't really lean you toward any kind of niche segmentation of audiences because women like woodsy notes men like woodsy notes it's pretty much universal and woodsy notes always they can either warm up a, any kind of heart of a perfume or they can dry it up and kind of balance it ground it a little bit more what I see in the notes is that most people on Fragrantica say that they first and foremost hear the rose notes but then the iris and then everything else and I agree I think the more I smell it the more it is a duo it's a duet of something sweetly soft souffle of roses with iris in them. I think that's what makes it so cuddly and so nude. I love it. This is the best blend purchase out of all the four. All of them are interesting, all of them are well made, all of them have this expected kind of like northern summer subtlety and sophistication of notes very watercolor like like concepts some of them are more long-lasting than others in my personal opinion the least long-lasting is iris and new amsterdam the most long-lasting would be extraordinary tulip and mm, 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 i would say in half moon because Generally, jasmine-centric perfumes are pretty beastly. It's not common for jasmine perfume to last less than three or four hours, just so you know. And somewhere in the middle is the William, which is like, to me, green soapy Neroli with kind of like this green and woodsy aspects of it. And sweet, a little bit soapy florals of 16, 14. Yeah, absolute must have for me is extraordinary tulip the iris is like it's a guilty pleasure because for the price I can't quite justify the price given how close to the skin it sits and how unobtrusive and subtle it is it's almost it's like a hair mist or a body spray but it's just one of the best kinds that you can find on the market so that's it, that's my review of the house of Atelier Blue M. I'm very excited to what they have to offer for us in the future. I love the way they approach their floral compositions. It's very, it's very niche. It's very European and it's kind of in, in the make, in the blend. And I think it, it packs a lot of sophistication yet freedom and simplicity that allows you to wear it every day regardless of the occasion of the atmosphere or the the place that that you go to let me know what you think of perfumes like that are there any favorite neroli or floral perfumes or iris perfumes that you have in your collection that you would recommend for me and others to try what do you think really compares favorably on or unfavorably what do you think about the hyper contemporary packaging and marketing that we see quite a lot these days especially from newer brands i'm super curious to see what you think about it is it worth the price is it or is it just a fad like, is it just a way to save money and make, make money out of thin air? Or do you think it really has a lot of conceptual depth to it? Thank you so much for watching. Please share the video if you found it interesting or entertaining. And I'll see you in the next one.